I'd like to call the meeting to order, and um, we're going to have some We'd like to introduce ourselves because some of us don't know each other very well. I'm Judy Bickford, chair of the select board currently. Uh, my name is Chris Palermo. I'm a select board member as well. Carrie Johnson, town manager, interim manager. Hi, Judy Elberry. I'm the executive assistant to town manager. Doug Santanello, resident. Christopher Mox, resident. Sarah Haskins, town clerk and treasurer. Brian Eaton, uh, chief listener. Richard Craig, select board. Laura Street, select board. And we have, we're just introducing ourselves. Don McDowell, select board. And um, the last time we met, we, we didn't have a facilitator of the meeting, so I'm going to facilitate. Doesn't mean I'm going to um, be. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that people have a chance to talk. I think people were talking over each other last time, and not everybody had a chance to talk when they wanted to speak. So I'm going to try to have some kind of uh, um, control on that if I can. So any agenda changes or additions? Um, I don't have any additions, but I do want to clarify something just in case you know the three new um, at-large members weren't aware of how um, it works. <clears throat> more efficiently with subcommittees um that's kind of what we are right the charter committee is a subcommittee and advisory committee um to the select board um it's really efficient if once you leave the meeting if there's any follow-up say like we were all kind of tasked with hey look around at other charters see what else is out there um i call it homework you can call it whatever you'd like but if we're going to meet once a month, it's critical that everybody get that information back to myself or Judy um, about a week before the meeting, because when we come to this meeting, we should all have you know read the packets um, and any new information you want to supply to us. We're going to try to make sure everybody has a copy of that. Um, if you come to the meeting armed with information that only you have and you present it to the other seven, like, bunch of us, there's a lot of us. It's hard and it's not very productive. It just means like we don't have, this committee was meant in our minds when we started um, all the select board and I started talking about it to be a year or less. Um, if we do it the other way, it could be a three to five year process because if you show up, everyone has new information and there's 10 of us on a committee. I mean, on top of the fact that it's gonna take a couple hours to get anything done and many times you don't get anything done, um, it's just, it's hard. I don't personally, and I'm going to speak for only myself, like getting new information without having the chance to really read it and let it sink in and then so that I can ask questions. So if we're going to do this effectively, when we leave here, hopefully it's clear. If it's not, ask, ask questions, you know, like say, hey, what was, what were we tasked with doing? Um, any kind of question is obviously okay, but if we don't get anything done in advance, then it's going to be really hard to make any progress. And I don't think I made that very clear last time, so I'm just trying to be crystal clear now. Um, I, I have to apologize. I've forgotten your name already. Christopher. Christopher. Okay, Christopher. And Carrie, can you speak to um, transitions in this case, uh, since Judy's not running, how that will affect the committee? Yeah, um, I mean, well, my we hadn't really talked about it. I mean, it's a non advisory. I mean, it's an advisory committee, so we can kind of decide how to do it. My expectation was that when the new select board member comes on board, they're going to be part of that committee, our committee, um, and the select board itself will elect a chair on the 11th of March. And so you'll have a new chair. That person can chair that committee, or you can decide. We can decide as a group if we want someone else to chair the charter committee. That's fine too. They're really only facilitating, like Julie, um, Julie, Judy just said. So it's not meant to influence the committee, but just have a, a point of contact too. I just thought, I think it's important because the, uh, going forward with any of the committees, they're appointed. So correct. Uh, you know, it's kind of I think important to understand the process mm -hmm. of when there's transitioning people coming and going. Yeah, and like with any committee in town, if um, a former select board member wants to sit on a committee as at large, they could, they could ask. Many, many people have in the few, we have a lot of committees. We're usually searching for people to fill those positions that are interested in being involved in the, in the uh, municipal work, so. Um, that's it. 
Okay. Our first point of business is uh, approve the minutes of the meeting from January 29th, 2024. I have a motion from any, it can be from anybody. I would, I would move the minutes of uh, January 29th, 2024. Okay, second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion about the minutes? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain, okay. Why? Um, I just didn't think I covered a lot of what we talked about. Okay. So that's fair. That's why I asked, though. So if you feel like there's more that needs to be added, you can say so at this time, or you can send one of us an email. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to, it's just, it's not a formal thing. You can just say, hey, we covered blah, 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 blah. And actually, an email is best because then Judy can uh, copy and paste it into minutes. Super. Yep. All right. New business. So, any new business? I don't have any new okay. business. We put it on here just because it's a format that All right. we've been advised to do. And old business. So the second draft review of the Morristown Charter. And I guess we're going to start with the corporate existence retained and discuss that. We have until approximately 530. I think we're going to have to end before that so we can transition <coughs> into the select board meeting. Um, good, good, good idea. So I don't think we made any changes to um, articles one or two at this point. Um, I think we considered both of them rather boilerplate. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? It is. And, you know, we intended to once we're um, as a committee, okay with the content, um, we're going to send it to the town attorney. So specific statutes and other things that were in some of the ones I, that people have found online we eliminated because we want him to make sure that those are all accurate and current. Does anybody else want to jump in and say anything about, um, um, art, I'm going to say Article 1 and 2? Have we, excuse me, have we sent those to the attorney to tell us that they're good? <clears throat> I haven't yet because, as I just said, I want to wait till we're done all the other parts. Oh, the whole thing. Well, I thought you said. Yeah. You want to send each one is there already? Oh no, no, okay. just as a whole, because there's only right now there's five sections. So yeah, no, I have not yet. So two is slightly different than last draft. The exact same thing, just worded slightly different. Just um, it's more. It's how more charters had it. Some charters had it, the first version, yeah. the majority have the second version, it says the same thing, it's just language. That, that likely it's in approved charters, that's what Sarah yes. was using. Right. So we stuck with what Jim Barlow, our attorney, said, suggested was um, using something that's already been vetted by the Legislative Council and other towns councils. And, um, that's right. So Sarah forgot that, but Sarah and I talked about that. She said, this one says it a little better. It's been approved. So, yeah. can, can we clarify something on sure. the email I received for this? It said that um, we've taken the responses received and recommendations from the town's attorney to create the second draft. Yeah. So what are the recommendations from the town's attorney on that draft? Because if I understand what you just said, Terry, we mm -hmm. haven't reviewed it with the attorney. So well, we asked him a couple different questions, but he hasn't. Re responded to this charter. So I asked him some questions about town manager authority because we spent a lot of time on that last time. Okay. So but that, he, that doesn't clarify for me what what section? What yeah, what the town attorney has provided feedback on. So he's we, provided uh, feedback on section four and section two. Okay. Do we have specific and what right. that feedback is? Um Sarah does, but in essence it was I can't remember. She said she was going to bring it. That's all right. Just like basically, yeah. um, we didn't send him any language per se to say read this language. We just asked questions. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing was general. Um, he said, "Go pull out old char other charters that are already approved. <laughs> Use this language. Don't write your own language." Yeah. Um, for local option tax, we asked the question that the group had had about changing it from the 1% to making it like a maximum, like if it changed, they said, no, nobody else has that, you'll never get your charter passed. 
leave it 1%, and then if the law changes and increases it to something else, then they're gonna have to do it for every single charter and Morristown would be included. Um, the town manager, he said, he said, use ones that are in other statutes, um, and other, pull up the statute and look yep. at the other charters, pick one that you like, use that one. And um, for the recall, um, we asked about if there could be language like saying like, murder something like you know if there could be reasons why you could be recalled and he said that's a really slippery slope not to go that way again he kept saying use use the charters he said find one that's already written that has um, increased I think the the first draft may have had like fifteen percent he said find one that has a really large um, percentage of Required required signatures okay. is the way that most towns tackle that. But but he he didn't see anything about our draft. It was he wasn't looking at it. It was very generic. Okay. Is that like going forward? Is, uh, like those separate communications? Is that something that you know when you're talking about before the meeting, getting all the information together? Can we include that, please? And we could. That? And we should have. That's a good question. Okay, thank you. Um, it just it was hard this time because right now we're all focused on the budget and town meeting day, and we've been getting a lot of questions. So a lot of this work, where I'd like to spend more time on it, we did not. We did not. But Sarah Sarah willingly took the lead on that. So that was a great question. Um, as a whole, we just kind of said, look, what should we do? And so this is a, this in front of you. This the result of this draft is. We found some language um, and we'll go section by section from other charters. We did not draft our own language. So it, would it be helpful then if what Sarah just read would be put in the minutes and it's in black and white? I don't I, understand what you're... You, well, the, I think so. I, I think I, it's I, more though like if, what I think Chris, we were asking is if, you know, Sarah does legwork and stuff in the next month before the right. end, can we have that? Before right. Exactly. More so than it be in the minutes for now. But I'm just wondering if it would be helpful if what she said today about what the the advice we got from the lawyer would be mm -hmm. helpful to have in the minutes. Yeah, it, um, sure, it would be great to have that in the minutes, just to have a record of that. Um, yep. It would also be great too if we're referencing other town charters mm -hmm. to know what was incorporated, like where the where sources. they came from. So yep. like, it would be great to say, okay, like we've updated section five mm -hmm. and we are using these sources yep. Um, yep. because that that I don't. I don't know, and I have to do a lot of like work trying to figure yeah, out how to piece that together. So, right, right. you know, to avoid having to do that work amongst all of us, that'd be really helpful. Yep, that's fair. Um, do you remember where that number two came from? Um, it's in dozens. A lot of them. It's yeah, a right. lot of them. Okay. Um, I do know that the recall one is Bennington. I didn't do the number four. That one is from uh, Waterbury. The uh, B, five, four B. And it, can I add, it would also be helpful if we're referencing charters. If this has been, in, if Bennington's has been in place for 15 years, mm -hmm. it very likely needs to be, you know, doesn't mean we should follow it, that we possibly should have an update, a more updated, accurate version. I think that's contrary to what the attorney's telling us, though. Unless there's an updated version and another charter, or more recent, is I just would like to because things are changing. I, I I'm not on that section, but you know, true. There was there's been several uh, incidences where this has come up, um, um, and but this board members have some kind of very strong mm -hmm. legal something that is having them removed so times are changing that's all i'm saying yes yeah uh, no i agree with that and i think that's why sarah asking that updated question was fabulous because and jim being fluid and working with a lot of different municipalities now was aware that things had changed and i was not so are if people are comfortable with numbers one and two do we have any more discussion on that one on those two Moving on to number three, local option tax. So we didn't change that. I know we talked about it a lot. Um, the advice from the attorney was not to change that section. 
and so I found my email from him and actually he um, he wrote what the language should be oh, wow. and long. for for only that one and it was what we had for local option tax for local okay. option both parts a and b mm -hmm. the entirety of it mm -hmm. okay so i just want to add that um, i've been following house bill 801 which is the charter proposal for the town of waterbury and uh, one of the things that the uh, attorney for the legislative council attorney um, added to that provision for local option tax is a and it's mandated, I think, under all charters that a tax imposed under the authority of this section shall be collected and administrated, uh, administered by the Department of Taxes, uh, pursuant 24 BSA 138. And they required that to be part of that charter. So I think as we, <clears throat> in that section under local option tax, where it talks about shall be collected and administered, um, that clause should be put in there because the legislature is going to require mm -hmm. it when it goes to the House committees. And what was that again? Here, I'll give you a copy of it. It just says that the state is going to collect and administer okay. the, the, the um, taxes. In the city of Burlington, I think in their charter proposal, Burlington had a request and get approved to collect their own tax mm -hmm. and administer yeah. it themselves. Um, but virtually all municipal charters have that permit provision in it. it clearly says who's going to collect it, who's going to administer it, because only 70% of it comes back to the right. municipality. They're, that's why they care about it. Right. I mean, they're getting 30. Only 7%? 70. 70. Right. Oh, 70. Seven they keep 30%. Right. 7 zero we get, but out of every buck that's seven, collected. <laughs> they keep 30% to administer. Uh, yeah. And then they take whatever they don't need for administration and, and put some of the revenue in the payment in lieu of taxes program, right. pilot My program. understanding was it was, was a state statute because of all taxes, but I can see where it's important to have it mm -hmm. listed here. Right, it, it references the statute, but it puts it in language. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Make that note, that's a good one. You want to copy that? Sure. I love that. I'm rereading my email. I also asked him two questions because there were two things that I found in a lot of charters. One was a clause about that it could, the charter could be amended. And he said, you don't need it because it's written in the law that you can amend it anyways. Oh. So don't, he said, don't bother to put that in. And um, some of them had when it was effective. And he said, no, don't put that either. It's going to be effective whenever the governor, governor signs it into law. So um, that those two, even though a bunch had it, would just complicate things and to keep it simple because they weren't necessary. So Craig, did you have anything to add or questions to ask? I don't at this point, but thank you. I, and um, Don or Richard? No, yep, I'm good. Okay. So are we? Finish talking about local option tax number three. Are we adding in what Chris was reading? I, if we, if yeah. we did decide that, I just want to confirm that we. I think that well, we're so going to add it. <clears throat> I'm going to suggest that as a note when we send it to the attorney. Okay. I'm not going to pretend to. Once you go down the rabbit hole of uh, rabbit holes, adding statute references, I just want him to be sure that it's absolutely accurate. Okay. Some, that was something Sarah and I talked about as yeah. well, is leaving the lawyer language out until Jim reviews it and he'll add the VSA, whatever, whatever, or et cetera, because we're not, I'm not a lawyer. Well, and I just don't want, if something changed, like this spring and, you know, we're doing it in the fall, I just don't want to miss one number or correct reference. I think we're going to wait to take questions at the end because we have a time crunch, Tom. And, and then we'll open it up at the end. Um, so are we, do we feel like we're comfortable moving on from the local option tax? And town manager number four. Do we want to talk about any other ways to raise uh, revenue or just this is it? It's a good this question. Is town charter, so this is like when you do it right here. Uh, this was kind of just like laid out to us in the first meeting. I don't know if there's been any discussion about other options or is this the only option we have? Well, I mean, this is something that we have to have, yeah. has to be in a charter. Sure. Um, there, 
don't know why well, we're there's here. lots of yeah revenue discussions going on at the select board level that that we don't have to don't have to be part of the charter so it, i'm curious to see what you're thinking about that what needs yeah. to be in a charter that throwing out ideas such as uh you know maybe if you own over five units your property is appraised at 120 percent of fair market value um other towns do that it seems like kind of a good idea uh we could always put in charters if you short-term rental you could add a tax onto that like maybe an option tax to that um i mean there's other things that we could put in here and not just be relevant to the 70 cents on the dollar um tax that we're talking about like i just think it's i it would be good to have this discussion that broad you know broad discussion of, hey how can we you know put this into the charter and bring in more money so we just this and next next item i don't this is not the committee for that i think it's a great idea but we didn't intend for this to be um looking at all revenue sources i do know that from the select board and other members of the public that they want to add more to the charter as we um, develop things so that's another committee probably next year but not this year's um, well like just again i referenced this last time and add to, to join this committee you know work as a group determining the contents of the, of the charter yeah. i just thought that would be a good spot to bring this up because hey we could get that in the charter. and it's a great Maybe point the voters will pass it who knows um we're not we're just not going to do it this year so i mean if if you're not happy with that that's fine we can keep your name and we will I said not happy. I'm just okay. bringing up other options. Okay. You know, it seems like this was basically yep. here. This is what we're doing. You said that last time, which yeah. is why it to me sounds like you're not pleased with it. So you can do whatever you like, but I hope that you will stay on. You know, because this sounds like it's going to be in Morristown's future for a long time. So, know? Craig, yeah, I, I mean, I think you're you're raising a good point that there are other revenue sources out there. I mean, Laura's right. We've we've been talking about a lot of. A lot of revenue sources in the last 12 months and we're certainly hearing from you know taxpayers and voters that we need to be looking at them and uh, you know a lot of what we're talking about here today well, a lot of what we're talking about as part of this committee is the local options tax and that's what seemed to get the the ball rolling and um, I'm not discounting anything that you're saying I I, I think it's um, I think there's some some value to having that conversation. What uh, and you know it's funny. I asked. I talked to Carrie this morning, and one of my questions was, "Is there a is there a reason for us to try and get everything into this first time, like like one time and done kind of thing?" And it doesn't look like there is. I mean, we can go back every single year, I and mean, this sounds pretty inefficient, but. Just to throw that out there, we can go out there, we can go back to the legislature next year, we can go back the year after and and slowly hone this and let this let this charter evolve. Um, and I and I'm not not discounting other options, but I did say at the last uh, meeting, I would really like to get a charter in place. And I think the more things that we add to this, the more complicated it could get not that it would get but that it could get because we're going to need the you know we need uh we need voters to agree with us that this is a wise thing to do and uh you know if we start just using what you threw out there you know taxing uh short-term rentals or almost sounded like an impact fee you were saying there before but you know whatever maybe that's not what it is it, it just gets it could get more difficult that that would be my only concern right now I'm not discounting it. Maybe in 12 months, we're gonna be coming right back here and we're gonna be doing just what you're suggesting. Can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. Is there a definition of short-term rental from the state? Because, so yeah. the rooms tax, I know in some places yeah. an Airbnb, a short-term rental would be considered that room tax. In some places it's not, do we know the difference? What are we allowed to tax under that? You're um, looking at the wrong person. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Judy. I'm not a lawyer. No, and we're not. We're. Not, I'm not going to determine that. And neither is the zoning administrator. It's a. Um, the state administers this program, and they determine that. Technically, eight over eight. If it can sleep over eight people, it's considered from the state. It's considered. But if I Airbnb a place that sleeps two for the weekend, the right. state doesn't consider that. Much. So, but if you get to eight, more than eight people, then you've got a whole. Right. 
Ryan, I would agree. That, I mean, that's a we need mm -hmm. to have the answer to that, yeah. don't we, that's before we go question. to the voters? No, I mean, I thought what you were saying was we're going off. So, yeah, we, have, if, twin beds. we don't okay. we don't necessarily need to know that. We need to understand it because the state charges thirty percent for a reason because they follow this the state sales tax and all of these tax rules. We piggyback on that. We don't create our own rules by adding this in our charter. We copy the state's policies and, and regulations on so the So is the state tax. in charge of deciding what is taxable and then doing the taxing? Yes. Right. Because most of the Airbnb, um, if you look at Morristown's um, taxes, let's say um, sales, use, rooms, meals, alcohol for 2022, there's nothing in there that's reported for rooms. It's because um, you have to have uh, 10 or more um, uh, applicants to qualify for public disclosure of what that tax is. So Airbnbs pay their taxes, any applicable taxes for rooms through Airbnb, and they're considered one entity and they file with the state. So when I requested that information, it was unavailable to me in terms of how much Morristown generates in rooms tax. If you go back to 2019, which was the last year that they reported it, it was over a million dollars. So what will happen is, is that with the rooms tax as part of our charter, whatever is paid from Morristown to the tax department under the rooms tax, we will get 70% of that. If it's $10,000, we'll get seven. If it's $700,000 or a million dollars, we'll get 700,000. But the state will dictate that. All we're saying is, is that we want a piece of that pie, whatever's reported to you legally through the, the various uh, entities that have to pay a rooms tax. I just want to be clear too. I'm really adamant about this, about the sales pitches that are currently going on. One was just in the newspaper. All we're going, all we're doing with this is getting the option to do this. We need to really hone the conversation in on that we're, we're when we decide to do it, it's a whole nother conversation. We're going, this is going to fail if we keep talking about this option tax because everyone's going to think we're voting for the option tax. So I think we really need to be very careful going forward that we're talking about very basic language that will give us the opportunity to do this and then it will will form the whole idea and it will go to the voters and uh, people are already confused about this. So I really am reaching out to the committee to really be careful <clears throat> about sales pitching and predicting what all this money is going to do for us because you're you're going to end up we're end up we're going to lose the charter because of this. I think the information though is helpful to know that a million dollars was generated by our community in 2019. 2019, which was quite a long time ago, and that we could have gotten seven hundred thousand dollars of that money for our community had we had a local option tax at that time. So that information I think is important. Well, I mean, and that's why we're hiring to Laura's point for both everyone here. We're hiring an, an economist to give us a real estimate. Yeah, and it's still. Time frame on that? Um, he just contacted me last week. He said that the work that he had with the state was holding him back a little, but he's free from that now. So um, should be soon. I'm hoping maybe even at our next meeting that he can zoom in and talk to us um, initially um, and then do the work. So, I mean, it just seems spring. like we're putting the horse before uh, the cart before the horse again. Wouldn't it make sense to get this first and knowing that we can do it and then get the study? No, because we can't do it until we, until no, it's, it's just passed. not your question is I, I get it, but it, it's just not how he recommends it get done. Um, he's Jeff Carr is the one I spoke to about it. Um, and he's willing this spring to, to look I'm at just the saying because if this doesn't get passed, then we're a year out and we've got information that's not up to date. If we don't get the information, people are going to ask for numbers or make up their own and absent any information, they'll make information up or yeah, guess when we actually vote for them. So I mean, you asked for professional yeah. advice. Okay. I, I am hiring on behalf of the town, Jeff Carr, and he suggested doing this study this year and this spring. So I'm not going to debate that with him. Um, because he's the expert we paid for. 
This is, um, this this is really a parallel uh, route that we're going in. We're looking at developing the charter language, which is basic at best. And we're also looking at the data that's going to tell us, you know, what revenue is, is, is generated and what it could mean for Morristown uh, voters. Where the money's coming from, is it out of state, out of town, in town, what the percentages are, all of that information is germane in the conversation, but we need to keep moving forward in a parallel universe here so that when we get to the end of the road, all this stuff is done at the same time. That just makes a lot of sense to me. You know, the local option tax, um, you know, what we're prescribing here, there's very few things that the state allows municipalities to do in terms of collecting taxes outside of property taxes. This is low hanging fruit. We know that this is time tested. The state has said, yes, municipalities, you can do this. So that the purpose of at least walking down the path of getting this in place is, is that we know we can accomplish this, assuming that the voters approve it. Why not do this first? And if there's other issues that we see that we want to amend this by, then we can take the time to study that stuff. But I think in the interim, this could mean significant things to the town of Morristown. We should find out if it is. We received buy-in from the voters already that there was an interest in this. Okay. So I think when we go to the uh, communication aspect, <clears throat> it's, you know, I agree with Laura, we need to be clear that this is to give the voters the opportunity to vote on having these taxes, and they can choose each one of these taxes as to whether or not they want to enable that tax to be collected on. So I, I do agree that we need to be clear on that, but I, I think if all these efforts are worthwhile, and I agree like with what Craig is saying, but I view that as, as option two, like we, we get the town charter in, but then I'm expecting that I'm continuing working on this with Craig and with Brian and with you all to, to come up with other ideas. I want to come up with other ideas, but I want to get this well, and I, right, and I appreciate the clarification because the messaging wasn't great about this committee, you know, and it's obviously, it's just really to get through this local, this option tax as fast as possible. So, you know, now that that's clear and that messaging is actually clear and I can understand that, then I think, yeah, that yeah, makes sense what you're saying. Um, but that dovetails into what you're saying, our messaging has to be better in this town, especially on this issue. Yeah. And that's one of the things I think doing a study helps on. I think. Obviously, you guys haven't been around that long, but in the past, we've all been giving stuff to vote on, and the select board says, well, we're doing this, and we say, why, and what's it going to impact, and they say, we don't know. How can I vote on that? I want to know who's paying the tax, how much are they paying, mm -hmm. what's right. the ramifications of it. It's right. I mean, part of my process as a voter. And that's really integral to making that decision. Well, I, if we don't have a charter, we can't do it in five years. That's my concern. So if it gets voted down, but if you came you know. to me and I was a voter and you said, we want to put this, put this charter in, and I say, why? And you say, well, we're going to figure that out later. I would vote no. I don't want to well, have a town charter. Like, what's our sales pitch to the voters on this? Well, this, is giving, this is giving us options right. going forward. That's right. Uh, that, we that we have to have a charter in order to do any of these actions. Right. So we don't have this charter. We can't even consider it. If you start pitching it that the whole reason we're doing this is for this options tax, I think that's a total different message. It's going to be pretty obvious when people look at it that it's for the local option tax. And it's been done in a lot of other communities in a, in a similar manner successfully. Like, you know, most people are like, hey, mm, it's two yeah. pages long, I guess. I don't think for many of us, we have any pushback on it. We're just, you know, how yeah. do we put it out and message it correctly? Right. So yeah. we yeah. don't have this issue. When, and I think once the data comes together, the message will become very clear in yeah. terms of, of what it can mean and, and uh, what supports it or doesn't support it. You know, if the data comes right. back and says 80% of this uh, uh, local option tax options is going to be paid by Morristown residents, then we have to stand back and really rethink of whether that is. But if 85% of it comes from um, out of staters or out of town, then that puts a whole different reflection on it. And that's that's the information that we need to really put forward. But coming up with a basic language for the charter, coupling it with the information that we're going to data dig with Jeff Carr, 
brings us all to a focal point that says, okay, this is the document, this is, this is the data, we can go forward to the voters and say, this makes sense because. Are we ready to move on then from local option? Article. Just I want to make sure that everybody understands that we then, and a whole other article has to start a whole conversation that by passing this charter, you know, and I think that's where the confusion is going to be. And but there isn't as much confusion if you message it clearly from the beginning. And the message is, will you support this charter? We're all going to be part of the messaging as to why. And there's a second question on the same ballot that says, do you authorize the select board to collect the local option taxes? Charter question, LOT question. There's separate questions. You need to get out in front of it and say, hey, just because you vote for this doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. It gives the town the option. That's, that's all that's I'm saying. That's where the voters need to figure that out. We want to have this on. We're, we're, we're going to look at this. We're wait time. And being we'll very clear that each one, each tax is voted on separately because I know that there's some residents who are very against the meals and alcohol beverage tax, and some are very uh, for the room tax, and some are against the sales tax. So we need to break that up. We need to make sure that that messaging is clear for all of the yeah. residents to know what they get to vote on. Anyway. Just want to make sure we keep our options and we're not shooting ourselves in the foot. Exactly. So are we ready to move on from the local option tax to the town manager? I'm like just watching the clock. It's about seven after right now. Okay. I have a real quick question. Is, this is from Waterbury, is that? I just said that. Right. Okay. Yeah. And is, is the interest that said that you were following the Waterbury Charter getting yeah. put through? So has this language been accepted, or is this language that's up to be accepted? So the information, I, I, I'm assuming, I didn't compare it before I came to what was passed um, in the House and it's now in the Senate. But the section four essentially gives the manager the full authority to hire and fire all municipal employees. Yeah, yeah. Not I just wonder, is this, like we were saying, is this something that is it was, so It's halfway through, right? Except it's in the middle of being so, so the House has passed it in both a, a government ops and ways and means, and then it went back for a full House vote. The House has passed this. It's now in the Senate. It's in Senate government ops. They, um, Took a look at it today. They're going to vote it out of committee tomorrow. It will go to Ways and Means because that's a money issue. And then the Senate will approve it. But it's had no roadblocks yeah. at all on any of this language. In, in Waterbury, in the town manager piece, uh, Waterbury had a very similar issue where the town planner was um, interviewed and recommended for hire to the legislative body and to the town manager. It was, it, was a, it was an odd relationship because it was the only municipal employee that wasn't under, wasn't hired and fired by the town manager. There was a separate entity that interviewed and recommended a town employee employment. Um, Waterbury decided to eliminate that process and um, give full authority to the town manager. The Planning Commission endorsed that, said there's no reason for us to go through this step. It is a town employee. So they basically, the language that you're seeing here gives the town manager full authority on all employees without having a zoning administrator or town planner exemption. So I assume no, the I language that we're... So I assume this language that we're cons considering is substantially similar to other towns with similar language? Those who have opted to do it, yeah. So I think the answer is we should wait on this until Waterbury goes through so that we know it is the appropriate language and goes through. Right. We certainly saying. can. This yeah. is for discussion purposes, and I yeah. think that it's yeah. just bringing the committee up to speed in terms of what I think was the original t intent of this section was giving the town manager full authority uh, over all employees, except I mean, other than elected officials, obviously. And it sounds like if it's uh, that it's halfway there, so. It sounds like it's probably going to go through before ours even goes up for vote. Oh, Absolutely. Right. I mean, this so, is, yeah. I mean, yeah. my presumption is that this is a done deal. Yeah. It's just going through the machinations because if it was going to run into any resistance, it would have run into it in yeah, the exactly. House. Yeah. 
So, and you know, even if they're long, they're out by May, and we're not going to be done in May. So. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. so I mean, this is simply a template for mm -hmm. you know for this structure of the charter um, mm -hmm. as a suggestion. It, I think it simplifies the whole what was previously. Was the intent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's others that have been ratified that say the same thing. Yeah. 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 Done. You just grab another one. We don't have to. That's what the area I think we're all understand the concept of it. Yeah, but we understand the concept of it's right. I think the, the question that we really need to talk about is is it the correct wording? Right. And if we just waited on a month that we'll be done, then we can also try to wait. That's the only difference. There's a couple words here and there. It doesn't the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so are we pretty clear on we're okay with this as is right now? Any more discussion? TBD. TBD. Right. TBD? We're okay right. until next month. All right. Now, right. last one is a recall. So what you see in front of you, five. Sarah worked on this quite a bit. Um, Bennington. Again, the intent here was just to clarify something in case something horrible happened. Um, I was asked um, recently if if there was a reason that I had put this in there, and I did put this in there, it was largely because I was looking at the St. Albans Town Charter, and we had put one in there um, because at that time there was some controversy at the state level with some you know, felonies, some elected officials having committed a, a few felonies. But now, I mean, I guess I'm trying to see what the flavor of the board is because if you think it's not appropriate, we can take that whole section out. Um, this one is what they put in a lot and what Jim had suggested. If we want a section, we should raise the bar to at least 30% of the legal voters. Approximately how many voters would that be? Oh, great question. <laughs> <laughs> we have about 4,200. So it's about yeah, 12, 1,300. Yeah. So 1,300 about? It's quite a few people, yeah, about 1,300. Yeah, that would make sense. I think mm -hmm. this is much better than yeah. What we had the last yes. time, just for that reason. Yep. The only question I have is, you can only be called, be called once while you're in office. I know. Which I saw makes it. a lot of sense, but then, <laughs> right? Exactly. So, <laughs> I know. You know, I decide to recall Richard because I don't like him, and they don't vote him out. We get the petition, they don't vote him out, but then he commits a felony, and now we can't get him out that year because. You know, or in, that, in his term, in the term, in the yeah. term, in that term. So you get. Well, I think or does this mean, term. or or does it mean, yeah, you want to get Richard out, <laughs> and so you get your <laughs> signatures, but you lose. But then you know what? I still don't like Richard. I'm going to try and do it again. Oh no, I agree with that. Well, that's what I said last time. I was like, yeah. this could happen every month. But yeah, could right. You change the wording to be a recall petition for the same, yeah, the same event, the same reason, because it says here it's going to be specific. I mean, I, I could make up cuts. I could make up events all day long. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. it's then your, it's then the town's burden to defend them. So, yeah. uh, I I personally am going to ask to remove this for the same reason that Don was discussing before. I want to get this charter pushed through in version one. I think this section is going to bring up a lot of conversation and a lot of pushback. Uh, I think we can communicate section uh, three about the tax a lot easier. I think this section is going to become a sticking point and going to slow us down in this process. So my recommendation is to table this section until uh, version two, barring any, any other feedback from you all. And I'd second that motion. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. I agree with that. I, I think it needs to be in there two bits. It's going to have to involve a lot of specific I, language. I do think in your messaging, because this isn't going to be easy talking about taxes in this town, that maybe put it, you can carry some sticks here, right? Maybe put up something, uh, ethical guidelines, conflict of interest, some section in there that talks, you know, about the town, because that is, I know people perceive problem here. So we're asking one hand on the taxes, you know, that's going to be an issue for people, give them, you know, give them a carrot on the other side. Here's some ethical guidelines, Here, here's some conflict of interest guidelines that we should abide by. And I think that that can be a policy I, decision. I think it'll help sell what we're trying to sell here on the tax. As a, as a, I think just coming out and saying, hey, we're going to look lost and tax, you know, it, it's going to be an affront to the tax benefit. You know, hey, we want to do this, we also want to do this. Right, but yeah. according to legal advice and VLCT, most of them aren't lawyers, but you don't put policies in the charter. Policies like conflict of interest, ethics, those are 
town policies. We don't, I mean, unless it gets a lot bigger, we don't. Usually I mean, Jericho it. has one, South Rivera, and a lot of other towns. Have. Okay. So I don't know why that would be what makes us different, but I think it might be a smart idea just to think of it right now. And I think it would help calm the voters down a bit. I'm going to suggest, I'm, I'm going to recommend uh, holding it off to the second one also, um, because I think concern came up last time about this uh, public. I also think that a uh, town manager is very new to Morrisville. Um, and I think in order to make, um, I think we need to get the town acclimated to a manager. So there's already enough transition. I think this might scare people initially not understanding um, you know, they, I'm afraid people will think, oh, that's giving them too much power and we'll just be reactive. And I, I'm, I don't want people to be reactive and vote against this. So I'm recommending that we hold off on to, so we can have more of a public discussion and, and kind of, um, really educate people and let people get acclimated to having a manager. That's my opinion. Well, I respectfully disagree because I think if you have a new town manager in a brand new position that holds a lot of power, I think, to sell all of this to the voters again. You know, you say, hey, but they're bound by some ethical guidelines like a lot of other industries are and conflict of interest guidelines. I think that would actually put people at ease a bit. This is elected. This is the select board thing we're talking about. Right? This is what any elected well, official. Elected, elected. 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 Correct. And currently, there is state statutes and VCLT guidelines, and we have um, a policy of uh, uh, ethics and uh, conflict of interest that we've all signed. So there are documents in place that already are somewhat guideline that. Um, so that's and yeah, Bri Brian. Yeah, you, you're right. I mean, this is not germane to town manager. This is only elected officials. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. although and and I'm, you won't be surprised to hear me, but I agree, Chris. I, I I could I could do without this section for the for the whole notion of simplicity and focusing focusing this charter in the direction that we really want it focused, and that's the LOT. There's legislature rapidly moving through the state house about ethics that could trump and change this whole discussion. Okay. Any ways like it's very, very quickly moving about the state creating an ethics committee that would trump anything municipal we have any of. So we might not want to go down that route. Um, I, it sounds like maybe the majority want to um, wait on this anyways, but the other thing I was going to offer is if C, like we could remove only keep A and B too, if like C is a sticking point, I don't think we would have to have um, all three. I actually don't think I've seen this recall more than once. I think Bennington was the only one that I noticed that in. I found a whole bunch of different ones um this just seemed the simplest and the you know all the date ranges and if this and that then that's why i grabbed bennington because mm -hmm. it was the, sim the simplest of all. no i think it's I, really good that that b is perfect c if you don't have c when we talked about last time and you could just every month get a petition going and, and put the town through ten thousand dollars with a vote yeah, and I agree. It sounds like the consensus of the committee and is to remove that section. Yeah. So, so, so we shall for that for now. And the next for draft meeting. Right, right. Yeah. Not draft. Uh, yeah, later, right. So um, I, I know we have a couple of questions from the audience or for the public. Before it's, we get it, just quickly, okay. the next meeting, I want to make sure it's all on our calendars, is uh, March 18th a good day. That is the next, that is the last meeting of the select board in March. It's a Monday. Um, so would, would 4.30 work at that time? I will not be here. Then I'll be out of town. But you can you, certainly meet you without a, me. A vacay? <laughs> I won't be here yet. Every, everyone else? I mean, we're going to meet every month, so, and we will do minutes. So maybe we should see who's going to be here? Who's yes. And I'm, is everyone else? Raise your hand if you're available. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. No, that could be a work so in progress. We take if it changes. A, so it's okay, correct. we take a question. Just like that. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. Just yep. speak another two minutes. So. We're almost done. We met at four thirty, so you're early. <laughs> we're gonna be done in five minutes. Uh, I won't pick up your time. I, I, as a, yeah, we're talking about the chart. As, as a taxpayer, and what's going on right now? What you are putting out for this town charter? We a lot of people think what you're putting out is a local option tax. They don't realize exactly what you're doing. The word has got to be put out better what you're doing and that it, it is not a option tax vote that's coming up. It is a charter vote. And I really would stress that strongly right now, it's not getting out there. Uh, another thing I may represent is that you all understand that we're being taxed. This is how taxpayers feel. So we're being taxed left and right. And as soon as they see 1% sales tax, the, uh, that's it. They're going to vote no. My suggestion would be to take that out and leave the other two in there. Like they say, it's easy to put this stuff in. And your main point is to get this charter through. And if the least roadblocks you got, the more likely the voters will pass. Right now, I would tell you that it would not pass because we have the wrong information. It's up to you to get the information to us. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, can I ask you a question? Sure. Because you, I know you're very vocal in the community. Yeah. Would I, I would love if you could be helpful in conveying that message because I think you understand the importance of it. And I would love to, to you know, get get you as well as other residents to be supporting this and getting the right information out, getting the right message. My message right there is getting it to you so you can get the message to me and I will get it out there. I'm all for this. That's them all for the chat. I'm just saying right now, the information is not getting well, correct. To the information isn't out there because we're still working on it as Some a committee. Of it's to well, it, that's not, I, I would have to say that the committee is still working on it. So it's hard for us to say okay. this is what's going to happen because we don't have a final draft yet of it. Go ahead. Come on, come on up to the microphone, please. <laughs> you may already know this, but on August 2nd, 2023, just two years ago, the Planning Commission come forth to the select board asking them to pass an option tax of 3%. And the select board slammed them down. 2023? They didn't even want to discuss it. So that's how popular it was just two years ago. And uh, I'm not sure how much it's improved. Yeah. yeah. I think we're ready to adjourn the meeting. Do you have a question? You say, okay. I'll make, a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We are adjourned. Thank you. Mm -hmm.